Hey guys, welcome. So the last time I did a project with Weaver Leather, I made a set of leather tote bags. Now, if you don't know anything about my business, Nikki and Mallory, I specialize in handbags, specifically women's bags and leather goods. So today I figured I would switch things up a little bit. I'm actually in need of a leather laptop case and it's been so difficult for me to find a really nice case that actually matches my style. I don't know if any women can attest to me out there or even men. I mean, I really haven't seen too many, but today I'm gonna show you how to make one. I, of course, am gonna put my spin on it. I love working with hair on hides, prints, and things of that nature. So I'm gonna be using the Herman Oak leather as the base. I'm gonna mold it to fit my laptop case exactly and then i'm going to add the hair on lining as the interior so yeah before i start talking too much let's get into making this laptop case so for starters you want to get the exact dimensions of your laptop it is probably better to create a pattern piece first i'm just going to go ahead and trace it out on my leather since i am creating this project as i go which is what i tend to do with a lot of my creative projects I am working with the MacBook Pro and the dimensions for that is 15 by 13.75 and my laptop has a hard shell case on the exterior. So I'm actually measuring the laptop and the shell so that the leather sleeve can accommodate for both. Once you have measured the exact dimensions for your laptop, you wanna make sure that you add some seam allowance to both of the side seams and to the bottom seam. Do not add seam allowance to the top because that'll give your laptop case way too much extra space and you don't really need to do that. I actually did that here because I am creating on the fly, so I just wanna make sure I have enough leather to start with, but I will cut that off as we move forward. When it comes to molding leather, the process is pretty quick and simple depending on how you do it. I like to use the fastest method possible. All you'll be doing is placing the pieces of leather that you choose to mold into some water, lukewarm water preferably. You will submerge that for as long as it takes to saturate the leather. Once it is completely saturated, you will take it out, mold it to your desired shape and let it dry. Pieces of leather that I'm working with for this laptop case are pretty big, so I'm soaking them in a bath of water. But I wanted to show you guys with a small sample piece how it looks. So right here, I'm just patting the leather dry so that it's not completely soaked. And I'm using this little block just to give you an example of how you would form fit to your leather. Now, because the leather will be damp when we mold it to the laptop, it's best to cover your object with some sort of plastic wrap. That way it's protected and it still gives a nice form fitting shape. Before I soak my leather pieces, I went ahead and skived the base of the edges so that they're not crazy bulky when I start stitching. For these pieces, I let them soak in lukewarm water for about 15 to 20 minutes. I patted each piece dry and I molded it to my leather. And I took the round part of my edge burnisher and gave it a hard press mold around each side. Granted, there are various ways to mold your leather, but this is the fastest, easiest way for me. Of course, you have to remember all makers are different and we create completely different. So please choose the best method that works for you. So after letting my leather dry overnight, this is what it looks like. It is nicely molded to the shape of my laptop, which is about 15 inches. It came out really good. I didn't want it to be really stiff. I have molded 
veg tan leather before, just natural veg tan leather, and it was like hard as a brick, which I needed. I needed it to be for that particular bag. But for a laptop case, I wanted it to have some flexibility in the Hermit Oak. I'm in love, okay? Let's just say that. It came out perfect. I love it. It's back to its original color, a slightly darker, which is completely fine. It gives it some character and some depth, but yeah, it came out perfectly. Both of the pieces look exactly like this. So what I'm gonna do now is go around and trim off the excess leather, add our hair on lining, start to work with our flap, and we should be good to go as far as stitching up the case to completion. So yeah, let's finish up. So now that our leather pieces are completely dry, we wanna make sure everything is in alignment before we start the proper placement for our flap. So to keep our laptop case from looking like SpongeBob SquarePants, we're going to cut off these corners and give it a little bit of dimension and style. Also making sure that we round off these edges so they're not crazy sharp like Edward Scissorhands. Can you tell I used to work in television? Okay, so now that we have our flap in place, we can start to work on our hardware and also rounding out the top portion of these edges as well. As you can see, I've already given my flap a stitch line guide as well as a guide as to where I should place the flap once I start stitching. Additionally, I went ahead and skived the top portion and the bottom portion of the flap just so when we are placing our piece onto the base, it's not bulky when we start stitching. Now I'm just measuring out the flap closure before I add my hair to the leather. So the last thing we want is a laptop case that doesn't actually protect our laptop. So in addition to the single strap closure, I went ahead and added this closure piece that will adhere to the flap. So when you're creating on the fly like myself, you might miss a couple steps. So I did forget to mention, you wanna make sure you add your piece of hardware to your strap so that you can actually close the case. So I just snuck that in there and repasted everything together. So depending on the ounce of leather that you're using, you wanna make sure you skive down your edges when you are pasting two pieces together and when you're stitching, just so that nothing is crazy bulky. It makes a huge difference in the appearance of your piece. I don't know about you guys, but I am really big on burnishing. I love nice, silky, fine edges, if that's even a thing. It makes a really big difference when you have nice, smooth edges, and it helps when applying your edge coat. Thank you. 
Now to the most tedious, exciting, yet therapeutic parts of the project. We are going to start punching our holes so that we can hand stitch. Granted, a machine is way faster, but I personally prefer the construction of hand stitching. It just gives it a nice, clean, classic finish. Now that our flap is stitched into place, we can go ahead and add our lining and any other remaining pieces to bring it all together. Before stitching everything together and adding your second piece of lining, you want to make sure that your laptop fits perfectly once again and that there's no further adjustments that need to be made. If all is well, go ahead and add your lining and stitch everything to completion. Remember to trim off the excess leather that we left for safety. Go ahead and burnish your edges until they are smooth so that you can apply your edge coat. And that completes our laptop case. Thank you guys so much for watching this tutorial. I hope that you enjoyed making this laptop case with me. And if you make one of your own, don't be afraid to put your own spin on it. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below. Make sure you give this video a thumbs up and all the information regarding tools, hardware, supplies will be left in the description box. Hope to see you on the next project. Till next time.